I'm Kevin Pang. I'm Jeffrey Pang. And today we're going to make my favorite dim sum, shu mai. So how often do we go out for dim sum? Every Sunday. Every Sunday. And what would I always order? Spare rib and shu mai. Shu mai. I love shu mai. It's the open face shrimp and pork dumpling. And today we're going to show you a recipe that is as good as any dim sum restaurant. We want to let you in on a secret ingredient, and it's powdered, unflavored gelatin. And the reason why we want to use that is when you combine it with soy sauce and let it bloom, it's going to make the pork and shrimp filling incredibly moist and juicy. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add the gelatin into the soy sauce and mix it together. And we'll let that bloom for about five minutes or so. One of the ways that you can tell a good shumai from a great shumai is in the texture. So, Dad, how would you describe a great shumai's texture? It's bouncy and tender, not dry, very juicy. Yeah, if you go to Hong Kong and you watch these dim sum chefs at work, they'll take these two giant cleavers and just start pounding the filling and turning it into a uh, almost like a paste. Now, I don't know how many of you have two giant cleavers at home, so we're going to use the next best thing. We're going to use our old friend, the food processor. So what we have in front of us is we have pork belly. You can use country style rib if you like, but uh, we're Chinese. We like a little bit more flavor. We want more fat, right? And we're going to take the pork and the shrimp and we're going to be grinding it into two different qualities. One more coarse and one a lot more fine. So we're using pork belly. This has been uh, diced into one inch chunks. It's been in the freezer for about 25 minutes just to get a little bit crispier. That's going to make it much more easier to grind. And of course, we have shrimp as well. And we're going to be grinding this in 10 one second pulses. Oh, nice and perfect. ground. Yep, good. good. Okay, great. So we'll transfer this into the large bowl. We've got the rest of our pork belly. We also have small peeled and deveined shrimp. We're going to add the rest of this into the food processor. This time we're going to pulse it a little bit more coarsely, about five one second pulses. We're looking for about quarter inch chunks in there. We want this to be chunkier. That's going to give it that nice textural contrast. Take a look. How's this texture? Wow, that's very good. Yep. Yeah. It's much more chunkier. Yeah, and so, it's more chunkier. Yeah, and you can still see the shrimp and the pork pieces. And this is what we're looking for. And so go in with the rest of our mixture. Don't ever want to waste any good shumai filling. That looks very good. Great. Now it's time to add a ton of flavor into our pork and shrimp filling. We've got the soy sauce and the gelatin mixture. The gelatin's been blooming for about five, 10 minutes. It's fully ready to go. To that, we have water chestnuts. We have dried and rehydrated shiitake mushrooms. What you do is you just pour boiling water over the dried mushrooms, it takes about 10 minutes, chop it up, and this is the result. We have grated ginger. We've got cilantro. Here we got toasted sesame oil. Rice vinegar. And this is Shaoxing wine. The Chinese use a lot of Shaoxing wine in the cooking, right? Oh, yes. Shaoxing wine is a one of the Chinese cooking wine. Mm -hmm. Very much like dry sherry here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's glutinous rice wine. If you don't have Shaoxing wine, dry sherry is going to work just fine. Salt and pepper. Sugar. And finally, Cornstarch. Now, what does cornstarch add to the filling? Cornstarch can show the flavor and uh, make the texture very silky. Very silky, very luscious very silky. and juicy. And, and what's it called in Chinese? We call wat. Wat. Wat means slippery. Like slippery. And that's but, a texture that Chinese really love in their food, right? Yes. And we will combine everything together. This smells like a, like a dim sum restaurant almost, right? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Just a ton of flavors that we're adding into the filling. Does this look mixed enough? No. 
a little bit more. Okay, all right. <laughs> yeah, make sure you, all the ingredients go inside. Okay, so everything is combined, yeah, got it. Fine. Great. All right, I think that is good enough. Oh, I missed the spot. <laughs> all right, I think that looks good enough. It's time to wrap these bad boys into shumai. We're using dumpling wrappers today. These are Hong Kong style dumpling wrappers and you can tell because they're yellow. Shanghai style is gonna be white. Either is gonna work, but we like the yellow because it just looks better. These are three and a half inch circular wrappers. If you can't find these, you can also use egg roll wrappers, cut them into circles. If it's a little bit dry, if it's not fresh, you might wanna dab it with a little bit of water, get it nice and fresh again. That also works. We'll take about a heaping tablespoon of the filling. Oh, no, 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 there's too much. There's too much? Yeah, okay. Too much. All right, so how about, is that a little bit better? Okay. Okay, great. Okay. We're gonna show you two different ways of making shumai. I'm gonna do the beginner's way. My dad's gonna do the advanced professional way. Oh. My method, the easier method, you're gonna place this onto the cutting board and we're gonna make eight crimps. So first, we're going to do this east-west, just like that. Press it together, turn it 90 degrees, press it again, east-west, like that. We're gonna turn it 45 degrees and we're gonna do the four other corners here, like this, and finally, like that. So you've got eight. Now this is not looking too hot now, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick it up we're gonna make a circle with our thumb and second finger. Place it just like that. And we're gonna use the spoon. We're gonna tap the top. We want an even top like this, just like that. Press it together. We want the bottom to be flat as well. And this is the shape that you're looking for. You want it to be open top. We want these to be flat on top and on the bottom. We'll place it on a piece of parchment paper. And because we don't want these to dry out, we'll cover it with a damp paper towel. Now my dad's gonna show us the advanced way of doing this. By the way, it's always good to cover your wrappers with a damp paper towel so that doesn't dry out. So show us how we do this. Okay. You might be asking yourself, what is this funny little gizmo here? This is a bamboo spatula. You'll see this at all the dim sum restaurants. If you don't have one, you can use a butter knife or you can use the beginner's method and use a tablespoon. Okay. Great. So you're taking, again, about a tablespoon or so, which is about this much. Yes and it goes into the center. Center. Okay. And here, everything is happening in your hands, right? Yes. So you're making the circle with your non-dominant hand. Mm -hmm. You're pressing it. Yes. And you're basically, Turn. yeah, you're making the crimps as you're making micro turns and you're using your thumbs to press the filling all the way to the bottom, right? Yes. And why is that important? Because that will create a bubble. And we don't want that, no air bubbles. No air bubble. Okay. And you're also squeezing the Squeeze middle, them, yeah. so it has a bit of an hourglass figure to it, right? Yes. And so the great thing about this method is that it happens so much quicker. If you're gonna be making 40 shumai at a time, this is the way to do it. All right, we got a lot of shumai ahead of us to make, so let's get cracking. All right, we're rounding third. We're about to slide head first into shumai land. We've got our shumai here, all ready to go. We have a bamboo steamer. We also have a piece of parchment paper that's been sprayed with vegetable spray and we poked holes so that the steam's gonna come up. And uh, if you don't have parchment paper, what else can you use? You can use a cabbage. Or like or, a piece of lettuce, right? Yeah, or lettuce. Yeah, environmentally friendly and nutritious as well. So, how many shumai do you think would we should put into this steamer. Not, not all of it, right? Yeah, I think if this size of the steamer is about 12. 12, okay, about yeah, a dozen 12, or so. Yeah. And how long will this take? It's about eight to 10 minutes. Okay, until like the pork is no longer pink on top. Yes, right, Great. that's right. Look at that, gorgeous. The color is right, everything's right, time is right. <laughs> Perfect. We have one last step that we need to do, and that is we have to add the fish eggs, yeah. right? Now, does the fish eggs add any flavor? It's more for decoration. Yeah, it's more for the garnish. You can also add grated carrots if you like, but if you go to most dim sum houses, they're gonna put a little bit of tobiko or flying fish roll right on top, just to give it that nice color pop. And there you go, shumai 
just like at a dim sum restaurant. Mm -hmm. We've got chili oil, we've got soy sauce. Do you have any preference of what you like to dip your shumai in? I don't use a soy sauce or chili sauce because the shumai is already very tasty. Okay, all right, you're a purist. Yeah. Okay, why don't you try, I'll try one of yours because this yeah, is the prettier one. Okay. And you try one of my uh, try yours. not as not as pretty ones. Not, not bad. Okay. It's very good. Taste it, let me know what you think. You go first. Mm -hmm. And I'll try mine as well here. I'm gonna add a little bit of soy sauce. Okay, we got a thumbs good. up here. Mm. Very good. Okay, let me try this. Woo! It's hot. It has that silky texture that you're looking for. Yes. It's very, mm. what'd you call it? Watt. Watt. Yeah. Um, I love the crunch from the water chestnuts, right? Water chestnuts. That's really good. Mm. And, um, you know, there's a bit of chunkiness from the shrimp and the meat, but mostly it's just intensely flavorful. You're right, you don't need soy sauce or chili oil. It works perfectly by itself. I think this one will be much better than so many dim sum restaurants. This is even better yes. than most dim sum restaurants? The taste is very good. I'm gonna have another one, if that's okay. Me too. All right, let's do it. <laughs> What's your favorite dim sum? Tell us in the comments below. And for this recipe, go to americastestkitchen.com. Please like this video and subscribe.